As fireworks light up the sky for the 4th of July, researchers at UW are watching a light show far beyond the atmosphere. A groundbreaking new telescope is now up and running. It's called the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, perched on a mountaintop in Chile, containing the largest camera ever built. The astronomy department at UW played a key role opening this new eye on the sky. UW's astronomy department joins me now. Professor, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, this is really exciting. The Rubin Observatory has already revealed thousands of asteroids in the solar system. Can you tell us more about the telescope, what it's captured so far, and the technology behind it? Yeah, it really is a revolutionary new telescope. It's built in the mountains in Chile, but it was conceived of here in the U.S. In fact, some of the first drawings I ever saw were from uh, napkin sketches here in Seattle. Uh, it's a really unique telescope. It provides a wide-angle lens that surveys the night sky once every three days from Chile and performs this over a 10-year survey. So we're going to get this not just this map, not just this beautiful image, but a movie of the night sky over a decade. Professor Davenport, one thing that keeps me up at night, I'm not afraid to admit, is asteroids that we don't know about that are near-Earth asteroids. Will this be able to detect some of those? Yes, it will. Uh, that's, in fact, one of its design purposes. we got to find all the asteroids we can. One of the great things about this is when you have a wide-angle, an enormous deep lens that you can look into the universe, you see all the things that are far away and that are close up in front of you. So already in the first few days, as you mentioned, we've already discovered 2,000 new asteroids. But in the first six months, we expect to discover something like a million new asteroids. We're going to double the number of asteroids and comets and other little bits of rock in our own solar system that we know about in the first year. Is it possible to see millions of galaxies, too? Not just millions, but billions. Wow. We think there will be something like 10 billion galaxies that we'll survey and about as many stars, something like 10 billion stars. That is, for reference, more stars than people on the planet, and that's a first. Yeah, that is amazing. So when we're looking at these images, we see the colors, we see the lights, but what are scientists looking at when they see those images? Yeah, great question. What we're looking at is how things are changing. We, of course, want to see as deep and as far away as we can, but what makes this observatory special is that it sees the changes over time. So night to night, year to year even, we see subtle changes in how the night sky is, uh, is presenting itself. We see stars that are blinking, sort of pulsating and winking at us, or even explosively flaring like supernova. We see asteroids, of course, moving around, and we see the unknown unknowns, the things that we don't even know to look for yet that are hiding out there that will have little subtle changes that we can see in our data. So I know there's a lot of work that went into this. What role did UW play in bringing Ruben online? So we were one of the four founding members uh, back in 2003 or so uh, that got the first sort of approvals and the first people interested uh, from the Seattle community, the first sort of philanthropic give, gifts that drove this forward from Charles Simone and Bill Gates. That came from sort of our, our network, our community of people here. And then for the last 20 years, we've had software developers, engineers, and scientists here at UW Seattle driving the software and driving the algorithms. So our team is making the discoveries of asteroids, of pulsating and flaring stars, and also everything else that enables enables the community, the whole world, to make discoveries with this. It's mind-boggling the amount of data you're going to have. Will you be leaning into AI as well for this? Yeah, we have to. I mean, we were talking about terabytes and terabytes of data per night, petabytes of data per year. Uh, this is an overwhelming amount of data. At the same time, this town is full of people who know how to work with enormous data sets in real time over the internet. And so we're leveraging that experience from our partners in industry across campus. Uh, and we're training our students to not just think like astronomers, but think like statisticians and think like computer scientists. So two questions here. What are you most excited about and what kind of cosmic mysteries could Ruben help shed light on? Well, this year I'm most excited about asteroids. This is going to be, I think, our big year of asteroids. We're going to find so many. It's going to be exciting. It's going to tell us the stories of where our planet came from and where we're going in the future. I think that sort of cosmic context. And that, I think, is the story I'm most excited about for the next 10 years. How is our sun changing? How is our galaxy changing? Where are we going as a species, as a civilization, uh, in this sort of cosmic journey? Yeah. Do you think we have hidden planets that are nearby that we don't even know about? Maybe. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of debate about whether or not there's a so-called Planet X or Planet 9 hiding in the outskirts of the solar system. Uh, there's a lot of debate right now in the community. Um, I don't know where we're going to land. Ask me again in six months, and I'll have a really good answer for you. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, congratulations to you and everybody involved, and thank you for talking with us, Professor James Davenport from UW's Astronomy Department. Thanks so much.
We are going to check in with him in six <laughs> months, just like he said. Now, I came across this today. Look at this stunning image. This was captured from the International Space Station. It shows what's known as a transient luminous event, otherwise known as just a sprite. NASA astronaut Nicole Ayers posted this photo on her social media. She explained, a sprite is triggered by intense electrical activity in a thunderstorm, and they can extend for miles above the storm into the upper atmosphere. It's almost impossible to catch one just like this where you see the little red tip at the end. I mean, it, it's in microseconds, but she caught this photo, and she got it during a thunderstorm over Mexico. Gosh, all of that is so unbelievable, yeah. David. All right. It feel very small, doesn't it? Yes, <laughs> seeing all of those asteroids, oh my gosh, my heart dropped. So anyways, let's get back to the 4th of July. So